that middle of a long crest over finish, 80 to stop. I knew I would enjoy Dirt Rally 2. The first game gave me months of pleasure, as I'd make it a daily routine to load it up and to grind away on the single player campaign by a few tracks a day. My experience with this sequel started the same way. I knew how difficult the campaign would eventually become, but it's hard to ever imagine struggling when I'm beating the other rally drivers by a good 20 seconds or so, even in races where I messed everything up spectacularly. But sure enough, the difficulty level gradually ramped up and my advantage over the other drivers diminished. Eventually I reached the hardest Masters tournament, whereupon I suddenly went from coming first in every race to barely scraping the top 20. In this final leg of the single player campaign, my progress slowed to a crawl as each race became a torturous grind of learning each and every corner. And yet, nothing helped me. I was still losing to the AI drivers, often by more than 10 seconds or so. Any hopes of beating the campaign were slipping away, and with it, so did the enjoyment I got from this game. For those who don't know, Dirt Rally 2 is a rather lonely game. In the traditional rally mode, which I mostly stuck to, you don't see another car, apart from if they crash somewhere along the course, in which case it's tradition to ram them before carrying on. The closest you get to interacting with other drivers is by comparing your times with those at the end of each section, and finally on the leaderboard for the race itself. But while I never saw another car racing, it didn't matter. Their names on the scoreboard were enough. As the single player campaign wore on, S. Bernard and S. Stem Ness became as real to me as any rendered foe could have done. My times landed fractions of a second either side of theirs, with me hoping to finally claw victory by risking a dodgy corner or by praying that they got into a horrific accident at some point along the way. But alas, my situation in the final master stage of the single player campaign seemed beyond redemption. Those AI drivers didn't make mistakes, and even when they did, they still found ways of pipping me to the post. I wasn't having much fun, so I gave the single player campaign a break. And it's at that point I decided to try out the online component of the game, which is something I had never tried in the first game. By this point I must have clocked up more hours on the Dirt Rally games than most people had done, but it didn't help my nerves. For those first few online races, I felt like I was being judged, and that every mistake would somehow permanently hinder my record in some way. Merely loading up the daily race was enough to get my heart rate up. I needn't have worried. The daily races are just that. Every day a random vehicle on a random track is chosen, and you have one chance to drive around it as best as you can, whereupon your time will be put on a leaderboard for the rest of the day. But the moment the next day starts, whatever happened in the previous one no longer matters. That progress is wiped, and your terrible time never to be seen again. I soon grew very fond of these daily races. They reset at 11 every morning for me, and it became a routine for me to be on the main menu waiting for the new races to start. I soon learned that, while I was no match for the best drivers in the game, if I got on there soon enough I could claim the top place on those daily charts, if only for half an hour or so. It didn't matter that I'd never see those other drivers. I knew that if I held the high score, until it was beaten, everybody would face my times on every section of the track, that they too would begin to imagine what kind of person I was like, or how I managed such a great time on that difficult corner near the end or whatever. It gave me a sense of power, and would put me in a good mood for the rest of the day. More often than not, in these daily races I'd get too confident and would end up smacking face first into a tree at some point. But it didn't matter, since the moment tomorrow rolled around, I'd have a fresh chance to gain a high score, and a fresh chance to risk my dignity around every corner in pursuit of that perfect time. But these were just the daily races. These would be a single track, somewhere between 3 and 10 minutes in length. These are difficult enough in a game like Dirt Rally, where any small mistake could doom your car and your chance of finishing the track. But as if that wasn't punishing enough, there are also weekly and monthly challenges, which span far more tracks and locations. Monthly challenges are over 20 tracks long, spread across three different countries. That's a gruelling challenge in a game like Dirt Ready 2, where misjudging a single corner could severely damage or even write off your car, dooming your chances of making it to the leaderboard. I still remember my first monthly challenge. Within seconds I messed up, rolling my car and ruining any chance of a high score. The perfectionist in me wanted to end it right there and then. But I continued on. I limped to the end, completing my first race. Sure enough, I was a long way down the leaderboard. Terrified of destroying my car completely, I switched to a far slower, more cautious driving style. And to my surprise, this resulted in faster times, and my place on the charts gradually crept up, no doubt as other, better drivers messed up and wrote themselves out at the race. And then it dawned on me, maybe it wasn't that I was better than the other drivers, 
Maybe the others hadn't crashed their way out of the tournament. Maybe the tournament was so long that many better drivers simply hadn't bothered reaching this far through it. Maybe I was doing well simply by showing up and by not going away, like a bad fart. Who cares if I'm only the 500th fastest driver in any single race? By being more patient than the rest, and by grinding my way through all those tracks slowly and cautiously, I'd still managed to fight my way down to the top 50 overall. And this was without even driving particularly quickly. I hadn't memorised the courses, I would often break earlier than I needed to, losing a few seconds, but I was beginning to understand that this was better than breaking too late, losing many seconds, and infinitely better than not starting the race in the first place. Doing well in Dirt Rally 2 is not about being the fastest, it's about being the most consistent, the most boring, about knowing your limits and by driving comfortably below them at all times, about knowing when to be overly cautious, and about minimising the chances of each corner being your last. I took great pleasure in this by going far slower than I thought I needed to, yet somehow still coming ahead of most who undertook this formidable monthly challenge. Don't get me wrong, I was far from being the best. It seems like some drivers never make a mistake, they would soundly beat me by a good few seconds every stage of every race, and their advantage over the course of a monthly challenge would consistently grow from the seconds and into the minutes. The mere idea of matching them in a single segment became an insurmountable challenge. Even along seemingly simple straight sections they'd soundly secure superior scores, surpassing my subpar struggles as I soon succumbed to settling for second place, or 50th as the case may be. When you only know your rivals by a name and a time, it's easy to hate them, to dismiss their achievements by assuming they're cheaters. After all, how can anybody possibly be better than me? I would often feel I had aced a section, only to still be 5 seconds behind the best. One day I had had enough, I google stalked one of the cheaters. Catty7073 was always near the top of the leaderboard, so I searched for him online, expecting to find a VAC banned Steam account to confirm my suspicions. But instead, I found a dedicated YouTube channel filled with rally clips dating back years. This wasn't a cheater, he was a long-standing, passionate racer who had clearly invested untold hours into becoming the legend that he was. My perception of this game changed in an instant. I was not the best, not even close, and people like Catty were proof that I had a long way to go. I developed an admiration for him and all he had achieved. If anything, the lonely nature of this game works against people such as Catty. He'll never know how much those below him look up to him as being impossibly excellent at the game, and what they'd give for just one result like the ones he manages almost every time. It became a humbling and reassuring tradition to search for names such as his on the leaderboards, to know how good it was possible to become at this game. Even being within 10 seconds of his time felt like a huge achievement to me and my ego melted away as my respect for this game grew. Coming within 10 seconds of a good dirt rally driver feels like more of an achievement than coming first in most games. I undertook more monthly challenges, managing some with minimal mistakes and securing a position in the top 100 or even the top 50 in the world. That was enough, I didn't need to be the best, I just needed to be the best that I could be. I took pride in my own journey, in my successes and failures, I started taking the time to tweak my car to give myself the slightest of advantages. I still have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing here. I have GTR Technical to thank for that. I felt safe following in his tracks, secure in the knowledge that he knew a lot more about it than I did. For a while I had all but forgotten about the single player campaign. I was happy doing the daily, weekly and monthly challenges. I enjoyed seeing where I'd come against the rest of the community and greatly looked forward to the next race, wherever that might be, even the Spanish ones. This game was an excuse to get up in the mornings, and something to think about fondly even when I was AFK, but eventually I felt it was time to finish what I had started. I returned to the single player campaign. I may have been 17th, I wasn't even hoping for first place anymore, but any place is better than not finishing at all, and to my delight the AI driver's performance started to deteriorate towards the end of the first bunch of stages, and I began to climb my way back up the leaderboard and ended up doing better than I had expected. The AI driver's cars started falling apart, and even greater mistakes were made. In the first country at Masters difficulty I clawed my way back up to second place, then again in the second of the six countries, then I reached first, and then it became apparent that the AI in some countries was better than on others, and I scored first place on the rest of them as well. There was a bit of a wobble at the very end, I became accustomed to having unlimited tyre replacements, but an update must have rolled out to patch that and I ended up running out and having to finish the game on a very worn set of tyres. It would have sucked to fail so close to the finish, but luckily for me 
they held up. The very last race I lost by 20 milliseconds, which I take full responsibility for with this ludicrous display across the finish line. But it was still enough to secure a victory overall, and with that I beat Dirt Rally 2's single player campaign, on a keyboard, in third person mode, just the way I like it. And suddenly, I felt like I had done what I had set out to do in this game. I was finally ready to move on to other games, and to put Dirt Rally 2 behind me. I'm happy to accept that I'll never be as good as drivers like Catty, not even close, but it doesn't matter. In fact, I'm happy there are people like him out there who show how much better at the game I could have become if I had wanted to. Even where I am, far below him, I feel like I've bettered myself, and I'm still far beyond many of the other drivers in this game. I know the importance of leaving corners fast, even if it means slowing down more than I'd like to going into them. And I know how to get out of a skid in a rear wheel drive car. It might even save my life one day. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with Dirt Rally 2, perhaps even more so than with the first game. It has humbled me, and has felt like a real journey. I have so much I want to say about this game, about how different the various types of car feel to drive, how some are so overpowered it's comical, while others are almost too nice to drive. I always do the worst on the Spanish stages for some reason, but take perverse delight in equipping wet tyres and watching my place rocket up the charts as everybody else foolishly chooses dry. I love encountering those bits of stages I've painfully mastered previously, now easily managing a great time that puts me ahead of most others in daily races. I enjoyed earning money to slowly max out my crew's skills. I can complain about how the paid DLC is teased in your face on the main menu every day, or how internet access is always required which stopped me from playing the game when I was on holiday, and it would sometimes cut out and ruin my progress at the end of a monthly. Yeah, I'm going to complain about that because it really was stupid and there was no need for it. But overall, if I condense Dirt Rally 2 down to a single memory, it's a very happy one and has more than earned its place in my top games of all time list. It has bettered me as a person, I have learned to accept that I'm not the best, and I found solace in just being better than I used to be. It has taught me patience, the importance of consistency, and how it's sometimes better to operate comfortably within my abilities rather than to always be pushing them further. And, perhaps more than anything else, it's taught me the true meaning of pain. Again. Sunny, Sunny, you will wreck the car. We will not finish.